So we're good? We're good. To, yeah. yeah. Uh, Are you good? You good to go? Yeah. yeah. Are we doing that? What's, what's, uh, uh, does that help? <laughs> should, we, should we do it again? Maybe. Yeah. That's uh, right. uh, uh, I, I can only apologize for the gradient. It looked great yeah. on my screen. It sort of looks like toxic sewage. Now I'm seeing yeah. it in front of us. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my bad, never mind. But I want to talk about how Rotate Zero fixed my transform animation. That's what's yeah. on the screen. Yeah. So I was in a situation where I had a bunch of stuff on the screen. And yeah. I wanted to zoom into one of them. So which one? Pick one. What should we do? What should we zoom into? Oh, the pile of poo, right? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. The pile of poo. Uh, by the way, this wasn't set up for. <laughs> I just, I just had a hunch because when I saw all of those, I'm like, I know which one I'm zooming into, yeah. and I, I had an 80 percent certainty that you would pick the same. Cool. Yeah, let's zoom into the poo. Um, so the way I did this was I used uh, JavaScript like get bounding client rex yeah. to find the the poo box. It's funny, isn't it? The poo box and the uh, area that I wanted to fill with poo. And so I had those two boxes there. And I thought, well, scaling happens from the middle out. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing I want to do is get those midpoints to be in yeah. the same place. So I did a translate. There we go. Yeah. Um, and then I need to do the scale. I've got the, the bounding rects. And I was like, the poo is an eighth of the size of the container on, on the height there. So I just need to scale it up by Make eight. Make it bigger. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oop, and it finally re-renders sharp. There we go. I wish it didn't do that. Anyway, and that was uh, that was my solution. So I, I did it with the web animation API. But this is how it would look uh, as a CSS keyframes, yeah. which is the equivalent stuff. Feeling pretty pleased with myself. Um, and then I ran the animation. And it did this. Dun, 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 dun. Whoa. And I was like, that's not really what I wanted. That wasn't because it, it sort of feels like it zooms in and then swings to the yeah. poo. Um, whereas I was kind of wanting more of an even, an even thing. And so I did some digging into how this all works. Uh, I found out if I replace none with rotate zero, yeah, the animation works. is now exactly what I wanted. Magic. And that sort of blew my mind. And I couldn't decide if that was just, if I was like the last person to figure this out or whether that is something that's going to blow people's minds of why that works. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you on the scale? Do you know, did, does, does that make sense to you as a thing? Like, I'm kind of seeing where it comes from, I think, but by default, it doesn't make sense, right? I, we have to admit it. it yeah. That's, that's how I felt. I thought like, non, rotate zero, they're the same. Like, really, come on. Mm -hmm. It's the, they're both doing nothing. So why does it drastically change the animation in this way? Uh, and to find all of that out, uh, we need to explore how transform animations work in general. Um, yeah, and cool. eventually, I'll get to why the rotate thing worked. Uh, so let's say I want to transform this box from here to here. Uh, it's yeah. also, also rotated. There's a number of different ways we could do that. Um, one way would be a nice, nice straight line um, and have it spin round as it's going down that line. But no, okay, we're going to do it fancy like. We going to do going to do this. So, so this this kind of animation. Whoop. You can, on the web, animate things on a path. That mm -hmm. is a feature we have. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it with pure transforms. Here's how I'd go about it. Uh, like by default, the rotate is going to happen around the, the, the middle yeah. of the box. So I need to move that center point, essentially. I could use uh, transform origin, but I'm just going to do That would purely... have been my guess. Transform origin straight down there. Exactly. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it with individual transforms. So I'm going to do a translate uh, 450 on the negative. Uh, uh, off it goes there. Mm -hmm. But the center point is still where it was. So if I rotate. 90 degrees, whoop, we get that arc, um, but it's in the wrong position now. So do a counter translate, yeah. pop it back where it is. Do you read 
transforms backwards like that. That's I, I don't know whether I'm unusual. I always think of them. I don't. I, I read them from from left to right. I think most people do. Really? Yeah. That's unusual. I because I I I always think of it. I guess back to front like that because like the first one. If I read that forwards, it's going to move down, but then the rotate. Like I I, ah, I found it easier to think of it. It's going up there, and then it rotates yeah. around its new center point, and then it goes down. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe this is the source of the problems I had setting up this animation in the first place. But if we run that animation. It does this, and it's it's not done yeah. a straight line, but it's not correct either. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it sort of undercuts the curve, uh, and almost in, in some ways as well, it feels like it rotates a bit before it even thinks about moving. So like, and then it moves. Okay. To figure this out, we need to look at this. This is the interpolation of primitives yeah. and derived transform functions. Um, an exciting bit of the spec, which I didn't know uh, until uh, uh, Robert Fleck, who we mentioned in a previous episode, uh, is pointing me at this. And I was like, oh, that's why it behaves like this. OK. And I'll, so now, I guess the rest of the episode, I'm going to explain what this all says. Do you want to repeat what Rob said to you? Uh, uh, no, what Rob <laughs> said to me was, here's a link. <laughs> and then I read the spec. And to be fair to him, that's all I asked him to do. Yeah. Uh, this is what the browsers do according to the spec. We've got our from value and we've got our to value. It will pad them out so they are the same length with yeah. kind of null things. And then it will convert the format so that they're in the same kind of primitive. So in this case, it means turning the non into translate y0, returning the rotate to, yeah. And there we go, we've got our zeros. Yeah. And then it interpolates each of the things independently. Yeah. So our 50% mark there is is that. Great. Makes sense. Yeah. And when you look at that, it starts to become obvious why it was going wrong. So we were relying on that uh, the 450 value there to set our uh, like center point of the animation uh, down there. But that's going to be interpolating from zero uh, down to 450 as well as the rotation. So what actually happened in our animation is the center point yeah. moved as well. And you can see that is what was happening with that animation. And that also explains why it appeared to not move at first, because it was yeah. just going around the center point. It is not until the center point moves that it sort of drags it um, to, to yeah the final point, I guess. The solution in this case you want to put the 450s in yeah. there. And that means they are you know, going to interpolate from one value to the same value, essentially not change. They will be there from the start. The point will be there from the start. And yeah, only the rotation. Exactly cool. that. Only the rotation is going to change. And it's really cool that the spec lets you do this and browsers let you do this, because all of these are matrices under the hood. Mm -hmm. But by letting you set up only particular values that are going to change, that's actually a quite a complicated or a non-linear change in the matrix, uh, which is a fun, fun thing to say, <laughs> um, like under the hood that the browser will do for you. Because if we, we're going to take our, our friend from the last Don episode, matrix. Don matrix, and if I create a Don matrix and to string it, it gives us the, the plain matrix yeah. version back. Um, and if we compare the two matrices, and we saw that these two things animated very differently, but they kick out the same matrix. Because in both cases, it results in the square not moving. Yeah, because the one translate negates the other translate in the top part. So Exactly. Yeah. So that mattered for our animation. But if it crushes down to a matrix, it's, it, that change is gone. Uh, and so if, if we take the matrix from uh, the, the, the final point there, uh, you can see at the end of the matrix is the, the translate calls a, a, an X translation and a Y translation. And that six point blah, 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 I believe is the cosine of half of pi, I believe. <laughs> if, if someone <laughs> can correct me on that if it's not that. But whatever. I, I, you know, we're not here to do matrix maths. But if we set that animation up between the two, it does this. Um, and what you saw there was it's, it's just going al along the line. And that's because we've lost information. Even though uh, the matrices are equivalent to what we had before, 
we've lost that special thing the browser yeah. was doing, pairing them up and interpolating the, the primitives independently of, of one another. So back to our poo zoom. Uh, here's where we're at. It's doing this. Uh, and this is the, the transform we've got going on. So let's have a look and see how the spec would handle that. Again, it pads the, the values out, same length, and then it gets them into the, the same primitive. So scale one, translate zero, zero. Exactly yeah. that. Uh, and from that, we can see what the midpoint would be. And when I first thought about it like this, I was like, well, that sort of looks fine. Like those halfway yeah. points are halfway, it's kind of looking as I, I would expect. Here's the problem, bringing out DOM matrix again. So here I've got my point zero, zero, uh, and if I translate it by negative one, negative one, and then scale it, uh, I'm going to end up with a point that's at negative one, yep. negative one. That, that's all fine. But if we scale it by eight, the point is now at negative eight, negative eight. Yeah. Uh, and this is why I think of the translate uh, of the, the transforms in reverse order, because you translate it and then scale it so the, the scaling is applying to the to the, the translated value. And what this means is towards the start of the animation where the scale is kind of one, each time the translate nudges by say a pixel, that is going to be a pixel on the screen. Towards the end of the animation, when the scale is eight, it's gonna be eight pixels. Eight pixels at a time. So one nudge on the translate. And now it's up yeah. to negative 16. So what we've done is kind of baked in an easing, like an, you know, a steep yeah, yeah, easing yeah. into the animation just by ordering it like this. And so that's what we were seeing here. It does the zoom mm -hmm. and then the translate. Yeah. And that's purely because it's, it's ramping up the translate as the animation goes forward. The solution, swaps it them around. So now it scales and then the translate happens in my head afterwards, because I read these things backwards, but that makes sense to me. So we've scaled up a point from zero, zero. It stays at zero, zero, because you know you scale something at zero, it doesn't move. Yeah. Um, and then translate by minus one. And if we nudge that translate up to uh, uh, by a pixel, minus two, the result is only nudging by one. And that gives you this, this much more, it, it, it's not being affected by the, the scale. So in my animation, swap those two around, but the numbers are now wrong um, because we scaled it up by eight and that translate is not going to be enough to bring the poo into the center. Yeah, multiply them by eight. Multiply them by eight, there we go. And I guess this is why this, how this whole problem came about is I was ordering the transform in a way that was easy for me in terms of maths. It's like, well, mm -hmm. do the translate, do the scale. Um, whereas in terms of making the animation work properly, they needed to be in the other order. Yes, I had to do a bit more maths, but this is correct. This will give us that animation, like everything, everything working out. Now I am wondering, what about your rotate zero? So let's talk about that. Yeah. Put it back where it was, rotate zero. Do you have a theory? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No. That makes me feel better because this, I like, I knew this was going to happen by by the time I did it, because I'd read the spec. Mm -hmm. So, like, in total, honestly, I came up with this hack after the fact. And the reason is, back to this, pads them out, and now what it tries to do is go for each column and get them into the same format, and it goes rotate scale these are two completely different things. Yeah. Now, it will get similar things. Like if you've got a, a translate X and a translate Y, it goes, oh, well, translate. Yeah. It can okay. communicate both of those things. But rotate and scale, they don't have a common format except for the, the, the matrix. Mm -hmm. And if it has to fall down to a matrix, it does it for the whole rest of the transform. So all these will be converted to matrices like this. And in a matrix-based animation, uh, we can see in the, in the second row there, the H is there, that's a scale. Yep. Uh, and then the translates are at the end there. 
And they got multiplied by eight. They got pre-multiplied by eight because when you're dealing with the matrices, essentially the translates happen last, uh, conceptually uh, last. And this is the same if you use the individual uh, transform properties. Yeah. Like if you if you do a scale and a translate, you would have to multiply the translate by the scale if if you were thinking in like yeah. non-scaled terms. So yeah, so you soon as you do that. That was what caused it to fall back to matrices. Cool. And then I actually got the animation I wanted. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. As a <laughs> don't do that in your code. Because um, it is a horrible hack. It just you know, happens to work if you're fully aware of, of how that stuff works. Yeah. So I would, I would go for this solution, I think. Do the extra maths. Do the multiplication yourself. But yeah, so this. That was it. That was my journey of like actually understanding how transform animations work. And it turns out now I can actually make them animate how I want them. Awesome. So the transform zero is like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Ah! Brilliant. All right, let's cut right there. <laughs>